Hello everyone, it's been a while. I have to apologize for being a little bit busier than usual, but actually I'm finally back. Uh, thank you so much for your support. Thank you so much for your suggestions and messages, and especially to all of you for your donations. You can see your names uh, here on the screen. Um, we're actually going to carry on with the white repertoire uh, first movie four and how to break and play against all these openings since we're done with e4 e5 and french let me just teach you how to play against the scandinavian i got more than uh, 15 emails so far uh, by guys who asked me maya could you please uh, give us uh, advice and suggestion of what to do against the scandinavian opening i've been thinking searching for all these variations and finally I found one. Uh, I didn't have too many problems because uh, I know like two or three quite interesting approaches by White, but actually uh, my vote uh, went here to the line that I taught a couple of my students and that was played and used in the past by uh, Mamedjarov, Aranyan, even Karwana and uh, finally, the guy who actually introduced it into practice and used it the most was Nigel Short. So let's get started. Of course, you know the first few moves, e4, d5. Uh, e takes d5, queen takes d5. You just attack the queen with the knight c3. And here, black has three options, queen d8, queen d6, and queen a5. But when we uh, talk about Scandinavian classic, we just talk about the queen a5. And... Uh, according to stats, uh, believe it or not, uh, the following move and the following variation has fantastic score for white. So uh, I wish you the best of luck and I'm absolutely sure if you just learn these basic secrets of the opening, uh, you'll enjoy playing against the Scandinavian in the future very much. So you play bishop c4. Uh, one might say, okay, this is classic. It doesn't uh, actually uh, look too different in comparison to the main line, but there we go. We play d3. Uh, what's so special about this move d3? First of all, we don't play d4, where uh, it might turn out to be even witness when they play some knight c6, bishop g4, long castle. So many times in blitz games, my opponents went with some knight c6, bishop g4, long castle e5, and I had terrible problems with the d4 pawn, with the center, with the uh, king on e1, and so with d3, that's not a case. Second thing, when they play bishop f5, bishop f5, is not going to have such a strong role like in situation when the pawn stands on d4. And most of players just like to put the bishop on f5. And finally, uh, you just want to go with uh, and take advantage of the d4 square. I'll show you how during the lecture. So let's go. They, of course, go with c6 uh, because they just want to make the shelter for the queen afterwards, queen c7. But what happens if they play knight c6? Because like lots of guys uh, played knight c6 against me. Makes sense because I cannot put my queen on e2, which presents one of the main ideas by white. So we play bishop d2. And the moment we threaten knight d5 to win on the spot. So remember, this is the first trick. You threaten knight d5, chasing away the queen and winning on c7. They have like three moves. So I'll just show you how to play and then you're actually going to investigate and dig up these variations a little bit more by yourself. In case of queen f5, uh -huh, this queen uh, has just blocked this bishop to go on g4. So it's unique chance to develop this knight on f3 and play d4 afterwards. If queen c5, okay, you may be avoid knight d5. But I'll go now with h3. The point of h3 is to be able to go with knight f3 and not to allow you going with any bishop g4, not even in some lines knight g4. And finally, if they give you a check, you go knight g2, bishop g4, you can play bishop f4, you can play f3, but uh, after h3, knight e2, knight e2, you just have a bishop pair in a fairly open game and slightly better game for you. So that, that actually happens if they go with the knight c6. By the way, uh, those who 
played classic Scandinavian variations, they will always go with c6. You go bishop d2. And uh, here, uh, most of these guys just go with uh, and put the queen back on c7. It's a reasonable reaction, even though we do not threaten anymore that 95 as like devastating uh, move by white. But the point of uh, bishop d2 is at some point, of course, to go with this uh, knight d5 tricks afterwards, for example, when the dark square bishop stands on e7. Anyways, uh, most of guys here do this typical bishop f5 move. Uh, it's not as good as uh, bishop f5 in the main Scandinavian lines. Actually, bishop on f5 hits the pawn on d3, and that pawn actually hits the wall. And uh, if we just have to consider this position even more serious, I just have to tell you that the, uh, developing bishop before they do e6, I can only uh, find a reasonable explanation behind bishop f5. You go queen e2. And this is an interesting moment for this lecture because here I found 18 tournament games, including one GM who was black, who played knight bd7. Because looks like, hey man, I'm about to make castle and complete my uh, development and all my problems. And then all those 18 games ended up after knight b5. Uh, believe it or not, you threatened the squint, but more importantly, you threatened check to win the bishop and that's it so uh, very nice trick uh, even uh, I won like two uh, blitz games I believe after knight b5 but uh, just like I told you I found 18 tournament games uh, once even lost by GM once by IM so uh, you can you can win like lots of games using these tricks that's why uh, lots of guys like to develop the light square bishop to g4. But actually, unlike other Scandinavian lines, when your pawn is on d4, when you have some troubles with that pawn, if you ever play f3 with the dark squares, here you just play f3 absolutely safely. So after bishop h5, queen e2. Uh, there is a very hidden point behind queen e2. Uh, there, there is no more trick with the knight b5 and knight d6. Uh, especially, actually, there is trick. For example, if they play knight bd7, you can still play this one. And you threaten queen. Of course, it's always a very nice, uh, sorry, it's always a very nice modern mate if they go like this. So it's for you who actually are beginners. And for those who actually want to go a little bit deeper into these variations, if they move the queen, you can always give check and, for example, take on f7, you broke the castle. Hey, 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 wait a sec, wait a sec, wait a sec. Ah, I, I wanted to say bishop a5 followed by knight b7 fork, but if bishop a5, queen takes a5. So you just take on f7, you broke the castle, you won the bishop pair, you won the pawn, and game is uh, e relatively easy afterwards. So that's one point behind queen e2. Another point. Let's say you play e6, which is like absolutely logical move. G4 chasing away the bishop. Same thing happens if the bishop stands on f5. Bishop g6 and you play f4 with the idea of threatening f5. So look at this. The bishop is under threat. So he has to play bishop e7. And this is the moment uh, where I actually explain to you. When you see that the bishop stands on e7, it's time for knight e5 to attack the queen and to attack the bishop. So when they go there, you take and you go long castle. The biggest problem of black here is inability to make castle because if they make, make castle, we play f5 and we either win the bishop or in a worst case scenario for them, they lose a queen. And that's one thing. And another thing is I can actually choose like a whole bunch of things here including rook e1, followed by f5, including knight h3, followed by f5 metaphor. I mean, uh, such a big number of things here, what is just uh, dominating here. And finally, in case of queen e2, knight bd7, uh, actually knight bd7, we said knight b5. In case of e6, we said g4 and f4. And in case of queen c7, looks like uh, they just took some breath and basically, uh, you know, like like actually I wanted to say they took some air and now they just have a nice position and it's okay I mean it doesn't look that bad but it's not like this you play g4 you play f4 threatening f5 to win the piece on the spot they gotta play h6 and you play this a very nice and unusual move knight h3 actually 
uh, what I find good about this creation is, is that most of these moves, like Queen E2, like D3, like F3, and Knight H3, are kind of very unusual and original by White. And basically, even if you play against a fairly experienced Scandinavian player, you might have like lots of good results and experiences because they're kind of unfamiliar with most of these ideas. So after Knight B7, F5, Bishop H7, Bishop F4, long castles. White is dominating. They can't play long castle. You just take on f7. Uh, they can't do anything else. Uh, you actually uh, will go with rook e1. And, I mean, it's uh, such a terrible game for black, and uh, they just suffer so bad. Uh, finally, if on bishop d2, they play the only move, queen c7, and that's the only move, we play queen e2. Uh, the point behind this move is that we don't want to allow them to play like knight f3, in which case they would be able to play safely bishop g4. Because, let me show you, you don't have typical trick knight e5, because queen holds the e5 square, and that's the point. And let me now show you the difference. Now you play queen e2. I guess you can now compare this variation with the previous line, and in case, let's just say they play something stupid, that I don't know, like, h6 for example you do have time for knight f3 and if bishop g4 you do have time for check because here our queen on e2 defends this knight on e5 and gives us possibility to go with a double threat uh, attacking king on f7 and the bishop on g4 so i just showed you one of the ideas behind queen e2 another idea just like you see if the bishop goes on f5 which presents the main line uh, I'll, I'll show you uh, the ideas and plans for white uh, after queen e2, they can go with the classic bishop g4. We just go f3, g4, and f4. All of a sudden, uh, we once again threaten to play f5 and to trap up this bishop. If they play like e6, f5, and you win the bishop, in case they go with h6, let's go, babe. I can play f5, bishop h7, knight h3. Uh, very similar to the line I showed you previously. Actually, it's the same. Uh, and you can play queen g2 move. Queen g2 uh, is quite interesting because it defends pawn on g4, it controls d5 square, and also it gives you some f5 ideas at some point. So after queen g2, they go like e6, long castles, knight b7, and f5. That's the point of queen g, uh, queen g2. So you can now give check by rook. And after this, take g takes f5 and play bishop f7. They are literally completely broken and have lots of difficulties to complete their development. Uh, in case of g6, you just play knight f3. Don't forget they can't play bishop g4 because you just play bishop f7 and knight d5. It's very important to remember this trick. They have to go bishop g7 and you go castle. When they go castle, you play rook e1, e6, and d4. Um, what is like a little bit bizarre about this variation that of all the possible variations looks like this passive one is one of the best approaches by black. Uh, there are so many guys who played b5, bishop e3, e6, knight f, you know what, as soon as you see that the bishop got stuck and uh, completely blocked there, you just play knight f3 and then you just go with d4 afterwards. This is nice position for you and uh, you certainly have slightly better long-term better game mainly due to these uh, already like um, pushed pawns a little bit uh, I would say uh, far and they don't belong there and also uh, due to this pretty bad bishop on c8 and what what actually happens if they play this main move bishop f5 I mean, we do not have any more threats with knight d5 and knight b5 because the queen is no longer on a5. But now we have this special move h3. What's the point of h3? We once again want to play in case of, uh, for example, e6, which is the main move, knight f3. But actually, let me just explain this one a little bit better. You play h3 to play g4. That's the point. Uh, and... Uh, if they play this main move e6, we just go g4, and after bishop g6, once again, everything is actually based on queen on e2, and this g4, f4, and f5 idea. 
They once again played bishop e7, but I just have to point out one thing. This is a little bit better version for black because they do not uh, allow any any longer knight d5 followed by knight takes e7. Uh, this is Nigel Short's game. He played knight f3, knight bd7, long castles, and look at this. Even if they wanna, even if they wanna play like long castle, they are going to lose a piece. One of these two pieces is fallen. If they wanna play short castle. Same thing, baby. So I play f5 and you lose one of these two bishops. And that's why they have to go with uh, knight b6. So queen can defend this bishop and they can finally uh, make castle. But no, we're not going to give them, uh, give them uh, this privilege. We play rook d on e1. So now we're lining up our heavy pieces along the e-file and send a clear message. If you play castles, I'm still going to capture one of these two pieces. Same thing if long castle, you just go with f5. I keep insisting and showing you these f4 and f5 ideas because it's one of the highlight motives of this opening. Nigel Short's op opponent played king f8. Short decided to save this bishop, played knight a5, and he, uh, here he took by queen and eventually he won in a very nice uh, bishop pair against knight pair endgame, uh, but actually after f takes e5 and a3 to save the light square bishop after knight c5, um, Nigel Short would have been almost winning because of the bishop pair, uh, because of the broken short castle for black and a possibility for white to come up with a strong attack afterwards. That's why after bishop f5, most of the guys will go with h5 to stop g4. And that actually makes sense. But if they do this to stop g4, now we go for another idea, knight f3. What's so special about this idea? Good Scandinavian players will play knight bd7. Those who don't have so much experience and who are actually, uh, who are actually unused and unfamiliar with the following ideas, no one expects knight d4. And that's actually one more difference in comparison to all these variations with d4. Now your knight can jump on d4 and you can launch the attack. So you play knight d4, you chase away this bishop, you also weaken the a6 square, you threaten to take on f5, they gotta play like bishop g6. For all of you who like to make interesting games, analysis, I'm just going to say that bishop e6 is worth of considering. And here, I would definitely go with short castle with either some of the sacrifices on e6 or maybe f4 followed by f5. After knight bd7, bishop e6, f takes, knight e6, queen e5 literally presents the only defense for black. You go check, uh, now you threaten uh, all, both of these pieces. They go king f7, we take on e5, take the rook in now. Looks like they're going to end up with at least two pieces for the um, rook into bones, but it's not going to happen because we get a forest line f4, f5, and here strong move g4. Point of g4 is that we threaten actually here g5 and g6 fork. They have to take and we now do knight e4. Knight e4 point is to hit this bishop with a champion after bishop e5 check. And now when you take on h7, if they take on h7, we're going to be able to save the knight on uh, c7. How? When you play bishop f4, this knight is going to be saved and you'll play knight c7. And another thing could be that uh, when you play, uh, when they play h5, knight f3, and they play knight bd7, the move I spoke about, that you actually go with a long castle, they go e6, you play knight e4, and once again, you want to take one of these two pieces. Of course, if they ever play long castle, you take on f5 and f7, they have to go like this, and I'm not going to give you too much time. Queen is on e2, knight is on d4, bishop is on c4, time to sack with a bishop. Knight takes, uh, knight c7, of course, exchange the knights, take, and when they play bishop d6, unlike previous position where we had short castle and an easy attempt to go with the f4, f5, here we go f4, we go g4, and now they can't take, uh, simply they have, they have lots of problems if they take, because rook is hanging, they have to take here, and once again we go with f5, we go with g5 and g6, and we're winning. After g4, rook e8, we play f5, g5, and there is no one who would stop this g6 move afterwards. All things considered, 
I hope that you enjoyed in this little presentation of how to play against the Scandinavian. Keep watching me and uh, hope uh, you'll enjoy in even better analysis in the future. Thanks so much.